Hello ladies and gentlemen, today my topic is about community-based organization CBO and community-based education CBE. Okay, community-based organizations such as welfare department, uh, YMCA, uh, Christian church organization and community-based school um, education and they need community-based education to serve their purposes. Okay, these organizations need an appropriate strategy to serve the marginalized population. So here are the examples I'm going to talk about. Uh, the various kind of organizations is um, which is a community-based organization and they need community-based education to serve the purposes. All right. Number one, I'm going to talk about is the literacy and health communities. Okay. In 1996, CISO and Home focused on low literate adults, societies such as African American, Hispanic. Obviously, this author is from America, so they um he focused on the Hispanic, Native American, and white of low social economy status. So according to Susan Hall at home, uh, these groups of population are commonly exposed to disease and experience shorter as life expectancy due to number one, they use preventive health services less frequently than the uh, other members of uh, the groups and Two, uh, experience a range of barriers to healthcare, and number three, a lack of reading skills may contribute to poor health status and outcomes. Okay, so, uh, Perry in 1989, cited by Caesar and Hall, 1996, quote, "Person with low literacy skills are less healthy because they cannot read the medication labels, and uh, usually they are, uh, normally they would take a uh, raw medication." All right. So here, uh, community-based education CBE introduced to us to improve the client's literacy and health skills and increase emphasis on referral and program linkages between healthcare providers and the literacy programs, and to give assistance to the law literate by developing and assessing health education materials. All right. Number two of the com uh, community-based organization I'm going to talk about is the practitioner inquiry communities. So what are the practitioner inquiry communities? So according to Little in 1996, Adult Literacy uh, Practitioner Inquiry uh, Project, ARPIP, uh, aim to expose some of the corollaries of working together by a group of practitioner inquiry communities. Okay, ARPIP is made up of um, the diverse group of literacy educators and learners who use inquiry-based development to one, uh, used to support each other by creating critical dialogues and topics, providing a rare context for co-laboring, um, providing um, co-laboring around the common concerns. They talk about what concerning them, okay? Uh, discussion, through discussion among the members. And the two make up of groups, example, literacy educators, teachers, tutors, and administrators. And they came together using the inquiry-based approach to uh, professional and staff development and knowledge generation for the field. All right? So the advantages of ARPIP as observed by <coughs> Little that that is, uh, ARPIP uh, resulted in individuals actively seeking opportunities to include others in similarly productive uh, field-based professional development. Okay, over the period of attending each other's needs, there are significant change in teaching curriculum development and assessment and program organization. All right, so A. ARPIP also helped to uh, strengthen the professional networks. ARPIP ha also helped to contribute to support practitioners' leadership efforts in regional, state, and national arenas. ARPIP also offers meaningful change in practice. Participants often in conjunction with learners. Participants also have the opportunities to invest investigate systematically the issues that I identify as important. Number three, uh, I'm going to talk about is community-based organizations. So in building connections in the classroom and communities by uh, Bingham Martin and Travel in 1996, how the participants implement community connections using adult education program. So it is by using oral and written feedback, content assessment, and training and workshop discussion from the members. And we know how to connect uh, and we must need uh, one, making greater use of community topics and issues in their work. And two, uh, capitals to pay the teachers who need curricular planning time. And number three, participants in the workshop using group activities to identify shared interests that develop as curriculum themes. Okay.
Number four is very interesting, it's a com prison community. So uh, adult education remains a valuable tool for the prison uh, to the degree tools in decreasing crime. Why commit crimes? Okay, because one individual lacking the skills necessary to become part of the society and also because they are ready to be sent to the prison to replace their skills with knowledge and abilities that will um, permit successful social integration. To emphasize that, James Wheatle and Thomas in 1996, uh, prison as communities consider education as part of uh, com uh, prison communities. Okay, why? Because through education, inmates can survive economically, social, uh, social economically, finding a place to live, and accept as a member to uh, the a large society. All right. Also, to assist the transition by providing basic educational and vocational skills, and also to facilitate development by preventing inmates from becoming so institutionalized that they are unable to unable to adapt to their communities upon release. All right. The number five, I'm going to talk about is the migrant community and, and education. So according to Vela case in nineteen ninety six, migrants face difficulties in their daily living with lack of understanding in the language cultures of the mainstream and way of life in the new environment so community-based adult education seems to be the appropriate vehicle for decreasing the need of um, a culturally uh, diverse uh, population all right so to introduce adult education into the communities the educators should pay attention to how to respond to the cultural political social economic and experiential realities of the participants and also to research the target communities and learn about its culture and its members uh, past schooling experiences Okay, to design a project into uh, how to uh, assist the participants to integrate into the local community, also provide an open and supportive environment, and to build a strong network of community resources, and to introduce free like classes and encourage migrant students in designing their learning experience that is, they uh, help them to be more uh, flexible. Right, and carefully select teachers and tutors who have can serve uh, as a facilitator and who have knowledge about cultural diverse population and uh, to help mm, them with the participants' cultural norms. Okay, also to design instructional strategies based on group uh, dialogues, personal interaction, and active participation. Also, design a curriculum that integrates learning core competencies with personal and community development activities. Okay, in conclusion today, we uh, learned that community-based uh, organization, CBO abbreviation, needs community-based education, CBE abbreviation, to serve the purposes. The organizations need the appropriate strategy to serve marginalized populations. So organizations such as Committees of Literacy and Health, Practitioner Inquiry, Prison and Migrant Education enable us to come to a closer look at the diversity of culture with the understanding of those cultures the facilitation in planning and assessment regarding that the learners need can shape the curriculum okay these are all related to future actions where the amount of time energy and interest and level of resources can invest in planning the best curriculum also this need the participation of policy makers, program uh, developers, and educators to spend their time and energy into these community groups that I have mentioned above. All right. Okay. Let's conclude my today's topic on uh, community-based organization and community-based uh, education. My next topic will be adult development uh, theories and models. Okay. Stay tuned and thank you for listening and goodbye. So ladies and gentlemen, make sure you subscribe to my channel that you will not miss out any adult education ingredients that I am about to share with you.